Good morning, Church! It's the first Sunday of September. And welcome to Canaan Church Sweetheart Tamas family. I'm Erica, and I'm so glad that you have chosen to spend the next one hour or so with us. I know that you are going to be impacted by spending time worshiping with us and hearing a great messages. From wherever you are watching right now, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, why not take a moment and share the link with someone you know who could really need that boost of hope and encouragement today. And if today is the first day you are joining our church service, do let us know by clicking on the link in our descriptions below. We are a community regardless of whether we are meeting up physically. So if there's something that you would like us to pray for you or with you, you can also type it in the chat. Or leave us a comment on our social media platforms. Or email us your prayer request and we will uphold you in our prayer. In a while, we will enter into a time of worship together. And Pastor Daniel will be sharing us this morning. And we will also be taking the Holy Communion later during the service. Please prepare a small bread or biscuit and a drink for the Holy Communion. But before we sing and worship our God, I would like to share with you a passage from the Bible taken in Psalms 71 verses 5 to 8. And it says, For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Amen.
morning, church. Welcome back to our Sunday online service. And I hope you've really enjoyed yourself worshipping the Lord this morning with the worship team. Indeed, God is here with us wherever we are. I'm so thankful for his promise that, you know, he is our living hope, that he breaks all our chain, that our salvation belongs to him. Thank you. Pray with me this morning as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to come before you this morning to offer up our worship and our praise to you. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us, all of us, safe in our homes, uh, although we have not seen each other. But Lord, we pray that we will remember to pray for one another, that we will remember to connect with one another. But most importantly, Lord, we pray that this time our relationship with you is strengthened. Our bond with you is strengthened. We also want to thank you um, for giving us, for providing for us in these times as well. Lord, we pray as we listen to your word this morning, prepare our hearts, open our ears, open our eyes to see what you want us to see. Touch us with your message. Encourage us. Lift our spirit this morning with your message, O oh Lord. Father, we pray as Pastor Daniels uh, deliver his message this morning, you bless him. You bless his words and let the words uh, come alive in our lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Daniel is going to share a beautiful message this morning, staying positive. What an important message for a moment like this. So pay attention, open your hearts, receive his word this morning. Welcome, Reverend Daniel Lo. Good morning, church. The Bible says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. And today, even as we come before his presence of God, it is always a great privilege that we can gather together as a body of Christ to worship Him, to praise Him, and to give thanks to Him. Today, I want you to believe by faith that God has a special word for all of us. I'm going to look into the Lord in prayer as we agree together. Let's believe by faith. God, through His Holy Spirit, is going to speak to us. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful once again, we as a body of Christ, we can come to honor you, to worship you, to praise you, to give thanks to you, and to glorify you. You are always worthy to be praised and worshiped. And as we look into your word, dear God, we believe by faith, your word as it goes forth will not be void, but you are going to speak to us in a special way. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we ask and we pray, and everybody said, Amen and Amen. My message today is entitled, Stay Positive. That's right, Stay Positive. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8, I'll be reading to you. Very interestingly, it says this, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. Time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. Time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from, em from embracing. A time to search 
and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. You see, the author of Ecclesiastes simply tells us that humanity will go through both mountain and valley experiences. There will be good times and there will be bad times as well. No life on one hand can be smooth sailing in a season or in one season, but it can also be full of hurdles that might pull us down in another season. When WHO announced that the COVID-19 virus will cause a worldwide pandemic, nobody can predict that it will be so serious and fatal. In fact, nobody can predict that it will cause havoc to businesses, education, traveling, tourism, health, and putting countries even to the point of standstill. Worse, nobody can predict that the virus can be so contagious and deadly to the point that lives will be taken away unexpectedly. Every day, we hear of people getting infected and lives are lost. Probably some are asking the following questions. When is this COVID-19 pandemic coming to an end? Why does God allow this pandemic to last so long? How come God is not answering our prayers? Why is God silent? Are we fighting? A losing battle? Now, we might not have all the answers to the questions, but one thing for sure is that God is still in control. Amen? He is the Lord of heaven and earth, according to Psalm 24. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 to 9, God said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. When and while we are in the midst of trials, what should be our attitude and response. What must we do to ensure that our faith in God will never waver or falter? Well, the answer is we must stay positive. In fact, in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, uh, this will be the springboard to what I'm going to share with you today to stay positive. It says in James chapter 1, Verses 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. And today I would like to suggest to you four ways, four ways to stay positive in the midst of trials. Firstly, the first way is don't quench, but be positive in your attitude. Don't quench, but be positive in your attitude. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, it says this, 
A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Don't quench God's spirit. Don't quench your own spirit. Don't allow the negative circumstances to cause us to have a negative and critical spirit. How would you like to be with people who have a negative attitude toward everything in life? I don't think you like it, isn't it? Why? Because it will crush your spirit and you will feel very, very down. If one is not careful, one can join the scores of people who always complain, impatient, argumentative, and lose the Christian virtues or the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When our attitude is compromised, we will lose being the light and the salt of the earth. In fact, we will also lose the joy of the Lord. When unseen, unforeseen circumstances and trials come upon us from all sides, what must we do? We need to be realistic. We can't change the circumstances, but we can change our attitude toward the circumstances. You know, in life, we will face all kinds of challenges and triumphs. But we must be ready to face it head on and be positive. You see, the Good News Bible version of Proverbs 17, verse 22, it says this, Being cheerful keeps you healthy. <laughs> healthy but it's a slow death to be gloomy all the time. You know, Paul and Silas gave a wonderful example of this scenario in Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 40. 40. And when they were arrested, beaten, and thrown into prison in Philippi, in fact, yet the Bible says in Acts chapter 25, at midnight, verse, chapter, Acts chapter 16, verse 25, it says, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Now, very interestingly is that... Uh, as far as this is concerned, when you go back and read this story from verse 16, is that Paul and Silas, they were actually on the way probably to a prayer meeting. But lo and behold, one slave girl, where a spirit was upon her, that he was able to, to predict the future. And what happened was uh, there was many occasions where this slave girl, she, she actually gave, you know, a lot of comments and criticism and uh, to the point where Paul was so agitated that she told her in the name of, he told her in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, when, when Paul rebuked her, the spirit left her. And uh, she was not able to, to predict the future anymore. And that caused, in terms of uh, monetary terms, uh, to the owner. And with all this, as you look into the scripture, with all the commotion, uh, with all the, the debate, as well as the complaint, Paul and Silas were arrested and they were imprisoned in Philippi. But here is a story that Paul and Silas has learned in spite of the difficulties, in spite of uh, this critical situation whereby they were in prison, they learned how to trust God and they have a positive attitude. And in the great confirmation of their faith, God heard their good attitudes and responded. In verse 26, it says, Suddenly, 
there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. You see, Paul not only talk about this principle, but he lived it. Perhaps the most positive statement Paul mentioned about directing our thoughts in this manner is found in Philipp Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So friends, don't quench, but be positive in your attitude. And the second way to stay positive in the midst of trials is this. Don't quit, but be positive with your words. Don't quit, but be positive with your words. You see, in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 23, it says, A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season, how good it is. Don't quit. Don't be sarcastic. Beware of using words that hurt and damage friendships and relationships. You know, words that bring about emotional and mental scars. There are many people don't usually realize the power and the influence the words they use have on people. We need to be positive with our words. There is power in the spoken words. It has the power to create things. You know, everything that exists came about by God's word. We can see that in Genesis chapter 1 itself, in the creation of heaven and earth. And then God, say, God said, let there be light and there was light. And as we read on, we begin to realize that whenever God, whatever God has spoken, it came into assistance. In fact, the power of the spoken word, it has the power to change the spiritual atmosphere of our faith. So when we come before God in prayer, when we utter words, are we uttering negative words or are we coming and believing by faith the positivity, believing God and declare the positiveness that what God is able to do, what God is able to transform, what God is able to heal, what God is able to do in our midst. In fact, the power of God's word also, he has the power of life and death. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, he warns us that the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. In fact, somebody say this, that the tongue has no bones, but is strong enough to break the heart. So, be careful with your words. You know, today, modern technology has increased the level of written words through various platforms like Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, WeChat, Telegram, Signal, you name it. There are so many. And if we have sent a wrong message or, or a word to somebody, we will not be able to retrieve it back if that person has seen and read the message. Now remember, your words says a lot about you. So pick positive instead 
of negative words. When you can be around positive people, why? They will influence you positively. So let us be generous and positive with our words. You know, during this time of pandemic, all the more, people love to hear positive words rather than negative words. So let us aim to encourage and build up one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Example is when someone is not well, well, send or text a get well message. When someone's birthday is coming, send a birthday wish to that person. You know, when we are positive with our words toward others, it adds value and meaning to life. That's why Colossians chapter 4 verse 6, it says, Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Another scripture, Psalm 19, verse 14, it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The third practical way to stay positive in the midst of trials is don't quit, but be at peace with the outlook. Don't quit, but be at peace with the outlook. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10, it says this, If you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? Don't quit. In other words, don't tremble and fumble when your legs are quaking, when faced with all kinds of trials. Look at the trials as a challenge and an opportunity for you to ponder, reshape, reset, realign, and grow in your faith. Do not look at the bigness of the problem, but look at the bigness of our God. Be at peace with the outlook. See beyond the circumstances and look to God who is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In fact, a research has been found that people who believe in God handles life challenges even more maturely. In fact, an avid Bible reader says this about the positive effects of Christianity. He says it helps you deal with life and its obstacles in the most positive and peaceful way. It also allows us to attain inner peace so that whatever the nature of our surroundings may be, we would have peace within ourselves because of God's presence. Christianity is all positive. There's nothing negative. Amen? How true, isn't it? When Christ is in us, when Christ is with us, we are able to deal with complexities and challenges of life better. God, He gives us the inner courage, strength, endurance, and a sense of peace. When we call upon Him, He will come to our rescue. That's why in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 27, talking about we should not worry 
about life itself. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stall away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And further on in that chapter itself, from verses 31 and 34, it says, So, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows, your heavenly Father knows, that you need them. And then the popular scriptures, verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, it's like a conclusion, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of his own. Somebody say this, hard times may come, but God is always there with us at all times. So don't worry. You see, this pandemic, no doubt, has put a toll on everyone. And we must hang on and keep trusting the Lord to pull us through. I would like you to see beyond this pandemic. Look into probably three or four years time, 2023, 24 or 25, when this pandemic is or will come to an end. And when it is finished, when it ended, or when it ends, we can testify and say that through our God, we manage to pull through this season of suffering. I believe we can testify and share about how God has delivered us, how God has helped us during those difficult moments. I believe by faith that when we stay and hang on, we will come out even stronger in our faith. So don't quit, but be at peace with the outlook. And last but not least, the fourth final way to stay positive in the midst of trials is this. Don't quit, but be persistent in your walk with God. Don't quit but be persistent in your walk with God. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. So don't quit. Don't give up on God, but be persistent and be strong in the Lord. According to the scripture, he is what? Our strong tower. And when we are inside a strong tower, we feel safe, isn't it? Why? Because the foundation is strong. We, by faith, believe that the construction is strong and everything is strong. In fact, in New York City, one of the attractions of the city is the high-rise buildings and at the heart of the city itself you will be mesmerized 
by all the skyscrapers. It's an amazing view. In fact, it is home to over 7,000 completed high-rise buildings of at least 115 feet, of which at least 93 are taller than 660 feet. And the tallest building in New York is One World Trade Center, which rises more than 1,776 feet. And when you are at the heart of the city, when you look up, your head will continue to go up, you know, up and up. And when you see all the skyscrapers, it is so attractive. It is so mesmerizing. It is so amazing in terms of the wisdom of mankind. But all this came about is because God has given humanity uh, the guidance and the wisdom to construct high-rise building. Foundation is so strong to the point that you do not need to worry whereby they are so safe that people feel safe to go to the office even when they are at the highest floor itself. In fact, during the construction of our own church mezzanine floor, we do have qualified engineers, architects coming to access the number of metal beams that need to be placed. This is to ensure that the mezzanine floor is safe, is strong and safe to handle even the seating capacity. In fact, according to one of the engineers, when they have calculated with all the beams that are in place, he said even 200 people are on top of mezzanine floor. You do not need to worry because it is designed and constructed in such a way that it is well built and it is very strong and it is very safe. And that is what we do to ensure the safety of the people coming to church to worship God every week. So cling on to the promises of God. Exercise persistency, endurance, and never give up on God. Don't quit. We believe by faith that the best is yet to come. Don't quit, but be persistent in your walk with God. In conclusion, Life is lived 24 hours a day. And staying positive is one of the best things we can do to live it abundantly. As Jesus said, he came to give us life and life to the fullness. So stay calm and stay positive under pressure. Keep believing God in the midst of trials. Keep believing God for better things to come. Stay positive. And remember these four ways. Number one, don't quench, but be positive in your attitude. Two, don't quit, but be positive with your words. Three, don't quit, but be at peace with the outlook. Last but not least, don't quit, but be persistent in your walk with God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, even as we come before you today, we thank you for your word that you have spoken to us very clearly that in the midst of challenges, complexity, circumstances in life, Father, we can come before you today. And especially during this pandemic period, there are many people who worry. There are many people who question. There are many people who are not able to see beyond. But dear God, today we want to come by faith, believing that you hold our future, Believing that you are the God of heaven and earth. Believing that God, your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. 
We may not understand everything in life, but dear God, as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ, help us to regain confidence. Help us to put our total trust in you. Help us, Lord, to stay positive until the end. We believe that this pandemic will come to a finish. But at the same time, God, we want to pray and believe that in the midst of these trials, in the midst of these challenges, that you will help us to stay positive. You will help us, oh God, to continue to encourage one another. You will help us, oh God, to build one another and help us, oh God, to be positive in all areas of life, knowing that God in you, we do not need to worry because your presence, your power, and your promises are yea and amen. So bless your people even as we go today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this moment, we are going to prepare our hearts to partake Holy Communion. We want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for His sacrificial love when He died on the cross of Calvary. Whatever challenges in life, the Word of the Lord has assured us and telling us that we do not need to worry. We just need to stay positive in the Lord. That He watches over us, He knows us, He loves us, and He will never leave us or forsake us. Today, even as we come before His presence in this manner, we thank You for the bread, we thank You for the cup that represents both the broken body of Jesus and also the blood of Jesus Christ, that we can confirm and believe and assure that through this, it reminds us of what Jesus has done on the cross. It reminds us of His forgiveness of our sin. It reminds us of His love for humanity and also have given us a brand new life. In fact, even as we are going to have this communion with that with God, we also have communion with one another. And we thank you for this privilege as a body of Christ. For those who are sick in body, by faith, may I encourage you to come before God today as you partake that there is healing in the atonement. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful that you will never leave us, that you will never forsake us. Whatever challenges in life that we have, you will always help us through your Holy Spirit that will stay, that we will stay positive. We thank you, Lord God, for these emblems that represents a broken body and the blood of Jesus. And as we partake shortly, we want to thank you because there is forgiveness of sin, there is healing, and there is joy in the Holy Ghost. Dear God, bless this emblem even as we partake in Jesus' name. Let's partake the bread together. And let's partake the cup. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, even as we go, we pray in the name of Jesus that may the love of God the Father, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may the power of the Holy Spirit continue to be upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. 